here's the move, I think. This is everybody wins, including plot twist, me. Right, hit it, boys! <laughs> What do you say we do the right thing? Sorry, I was just finishing up my little uh, A juice. A juice? Yeah. That's not apple juice. Affleck juice. I mean. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I thought Got you know what I was talking about. We'll get into that in a second because Affleck Week is currently writing itself furiously. We are not talking about any... Who wrote? Uh, who wrote Hook? Uh, Peter Pan. Uh, no, Hook was was Steven Spielberg. Well, yeah, yeah, Spielberg. <laughs> yeah. Spielberg. And I think he actually didn't write it, but we decided. Yeah, he, he wrote took the a script. nap, and somebody else wrote right. it for him. He he took a nap, and famously, a young, <laughs> a young Aaron Sorkin. That's right. Said, "I've got this." What scene was that that we were talking about? Oh, junk bond. Oh right. Yeah, 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 my yeah, point. Yeah. yeah, your junk bond. <laughs> We had the to five-year-old to throw out junk bond out of nowhere. Yeah, we had to look up what junk bonds were. Uh, Randy from Washed asked us recently. He's like, "Hey, toss together a little list of your favorite episodes, things that um, new listeners because they're asking what should we listen to." And and classically, we said no. Right, we just didn't do that. But and I, it's cool. Washed people have actually just kind of checked it out for themselves, and they've told each other like, "Hey, we're starting with the Mamma Mia stuff, and then anything else." Like, Mamma Mia Forward, I think that's a kind of cool way to do it, or whatever. Just, like, look for cool titles. Anyway, my answer now, I'm changing it to just listen to the Hook episode that we did, like, one month ago. The Hook one and, like, the Babes in Toyland are, like, two of my favorite just such random movie reviews. Yeah. Pete Pete seeing a movie that he thought most of the – he understood most of the movies and most of the different types of movies that could exist. Then then he saw Babes in Toyland. Babes in Toyland, he's going to – blow anybody's mind babes in toyland for sure i think that like maybe the the sweet spot is a movie that surrounds a kid and just ridiculous fan fantastical shit happens around them that's true because we've been very good on the first uh first christmas chronicles that's right we we crushed that second one not so much second one i don't remember was this uh, the, was... the second one couldn't have our review couldn't have been as good as the first no, definitely one not. the second one was the the kid uh the Australian or New Zealand? Oh yes, that kid, uh, that Bellsnickel. Bellsnickel, that's right. What a fucking stupid movie that and was. And I was thrown for a loop because they put uh, '60s singer Mary Clayton yep. in the movie, and I was like, "Is is this reference only for me and people <laughs> older than me? Who is who are they making this movie for? Nobody, no kid has watched that movie and is like." Uh -huh. is that Mary Clayton? Is she about to sing? She's singing now. Because, again, like, old weirdos like me will understand that. Anyway, uh, I was taking a hit of my A, a juice from that. We're going to call it A juice. I'm and cool I that. like that because there will be the misunderstanding of apple juice. They were very you dark say, apple juice. What am I trying to rot my teeth? I'm not going to drink that. Am I five? What am I, what am I trying to mess up my teeth? No, I'm talking about drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the good stuff for your teeth. No. I was coming down off a hit of the uh, the sweet <laughs> nectar of the A, and there, I was going to say, what do you say we start this thing off right? Talk about grapes for a second. I got some grape thoughts. You want to do those? No, I want to stay on A. On A juice? No, just A, because we're talking we talk about A week is very close. Okay. It's right around the corner, and it's writing itself. You didn't explain why it's writing itself. Okay. First of all, new month. Which means, I don't know if you know this, we're new to the Patreon game. We've had a Patreon for like 300 years, but we took the time to look up what it is, how it should be used, maybe a month and a half ago. Didn't even finish reading. Yeah, like around the wash time, we were like, this is a good time to revamp. Yeah, we're like, let's just, let's offer things. Yeah. Let's make it worth people's while. So right. instead of them giving at a, us at a, goal. A, a dollar for nothing, let's make it so this is a, a two-way street. They actually get something. We're giving them stuff. Beginning of every month, you, especially early on when you've revamped it, you're going to lose a few patrons because people who are at a tier that doesn't exist anymore can just drop off. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like I saw one of my friends listen to the pod. Very nice guy. I saw he edited his pledge, and I was like, that's what's up because your other option 
was just quitting. Yeah, right. <laughs> so recently, uh, on we had a fun Friday. On Friday, I that there was a you make my dreams discussion because we had a video issue and I oh, did right. a stream I from the brunch account. You're like a seven hour stream. It was a really <laughs> long stream. Shout out people in there, most of whom I think are new listeners that came from really? the Washed Fam that are I think new enough to not turn down anything brunch related mm-hmm. lasting a little bit. So it was cool. It was uh basically like a choose your own adventure type of stream. What do you guys want to talk about? What do you want to do? Um, Very weird situation because on Friday I, I was not part of that stream because I went home. I visited my mom and like did some did some errands and stuff. I got home to my mom's house. I walked in. She was sitting at the kitchen table watching your Instagram live. What? <laughs> yeah. Yo. Very she was cool, like, Mom. DJ's singing. He sounds pretty good. And I was uh, like, this is really weird. I have no idea how that sounded because how's it? I mean, I, I know how it sounds because I know how I sound. So it probably didn't sound great. But it was like a very, very informal, hey, we're talking about this. And then someone was like, grab a guitar. <laughs> so I grabbed a guitar. Someone was like, play this song. I was like, I don't know. It was a very fun exercise in just kind of uh, – guessing how songs go love doing that it's one of my favorite pastimes you end up playing maybe you guess like half a verse correctly and then you stop but did chunks verses and choruses of a bunch of different songs i tried to remember them the other day because i tried to toss a playlist together of like as attempted on a stream (laughs) anyway one of the people uh people were like what does pete want to hear and then there was like someone was like Father John Misty, so that's what that was when I texted you and mm-hmm. I was like favorite Misty song go, and you said Battle of the Dying Man. And I was like that's um, that that'll be way too hard to guess. And then I realized every Father John Misty song other than like Real Love Baby would be tough to guess. So didn't really play any Father John Misty. The real answer would have been like generic pop song number three. Oh, that would have been amazing. <laughs> Listen, tuning in to you fucking doing uh, Brighter Than We Burn. <laughs> yeah, brighter Than We Burn. Um, so, Damn, that girl's crazy, but <laughs> she, she knows what I'm about. People, I mean, I was going to say people are going to hear that song in a few years and be like, what was going on then? No one's going to hear that song. But I, we talk a lot about like something from two years ago, three years ago, four years ago that you look at now and you're like, that makes no sense. Or like, yikes, that doesn't hold up. And I'm, I always stress like consider that that's actually probably what was going on Mm -hmm. back then um so father john misty doing a commentary on like the subject matter of like he was making fun of probably like a a pg version of kesha right um rihanna like a a lot of just like hit makers yeah hot, like hot hit makers things that make no sense and just like let's churn it into let's dance it off (laughs) right yeah um by the way on friday night i was doing friday night marbles mm-hmm. and we got into doesn't the, sound like you doesn't sound like me at all uh only one left um what because of the playoffs i'm not gonna be able to do it during the playoffs are you f- only one left season one is gonna end then they we're don't gonna bring it was... back season two okay um but it came up because uh, somebody i think somebody brought up that you were doing like a basically like a karaoke stream and they're like when are you that's gonna-? more or less what yeah, it was and they were like when are you gonna do a karaoke stream and i was like Fun fact about me, doing karaoke is my biggest nightmare. Yeah. I cannot even imagine ever doing karaoke. Hate it. Uh, and they were like, how much money would it take you to do a karaoke stream on Twitch? And I was like, at least $1,000. Immediately got a $1,000 donation. Well, <laughs> so, poor you. <laughs> I am going to have to do a, a karaoke stream, and it is going to be the worst day of my life. What songs are you going to sing? I don't know. I don't even want to think about it. I'm going to break out in hives. Oh my god! I mean, you look like you're you got you got the pre sweats right now. I do. It's like it's your gonna, eyes are horrible. your <laughs> eyes are a little sweaty right now. I think that's what it's that's where horrible. it starts. Um, even if people don't know this. I don't know if we've ever revealed this, but like we did the uh, the brunch intro. Yeah. And like I had to sing like a couple bars for the brunch intro, and it took me like 40 minutes, and it was the worst day of my life. Oh, like the like you sang brunch. Yeah. The uh, w- one of the things that we were like recorded. We did like a line or two for the intro. I oh think. well, we did. Um, we did the clapback to lights, camera, oh, that podcast. That might have been it. That might have been it. Where we where we really took them down. Yeah, and that's right. Yeah, I d- do remember we that. Eviscerated them. Yeah, it, you were like, "Come on, you, you can do it." Like you were very supportive, but like, oh yeah, you were like 
you're doing it like you're doing it wrong. You're <laughs> definitely nervous. Like, just relax. The a huge thing about recording music. This, by the way, this remains a precursor to the update on Affleck Week. Okay, because we are going to find our way back there. A big thing about recording any type of music it sounds so silly is energy it's so weird like people can hear and feel the energy so if like you're just like a good singer or whatever and just you're just kind of singing it straight it doesn't translate if, if, if that's on a track or something people are going to be like oh that's i don't know maybe that person's not a really good singer i don't understand what it is hmm. energy is so much part of it which is why when people are like Ooh, did you know that T-Pain could actually sing? I was like, yeah, you've been fucking with his stuff forever. <laughs> Auto-Tune doesn't, Auto doesn't make you a performer or anything like that. So energy and doing it like at 130% versus 100%. And there's definitely overdoing it. If you sound way too crazy, then I was going to say you'd sound like System of a Down, but that shit sold really well. So it, it's, it's all about energy, and you can totally hear if someone's in their, in their head about something. A little fun fact about Vineyard Nights 2... 305? Vineyard Nights 305. Uh, Sean Fleming, a.k.a. Diane Coffey, had to coach me big time on that. Like, hey, you sound like you're... Y I'm listening to your vocal, and you sound dissatisfied with your own vocal. He was like, so get wow. to a place. He ended up just telling me, like, uh, drink some whiskey. So that's what I did. He was like, just get to a place... Where you're feeling loose and uh, and get into it. So I did know that about you, though, that your biggest fear is karaoke. I get updates. I can never participate in marbles because that's that's when I work. And every now and then I'll get little updates on marbles from whomever. It could be a Brunt Touchable. Most of the time it's our pal Mike from Woburn. That sounds about right. So he hit me up and he was like, Yo, you ready to you ready to make some karaoke backing tracks for? And I'm like, I wasn't even towards the end yet, and I was like, this is already a yes. <laughs> um, he was like, Pete said that his biggest fear is karaoke, and I was like, it sure is. <laughs> Why did he say that? <laughs> and then he was like, well, that then people gave him a thousand dollars, and I was like, hold on, I gotta tweet something real quick. <laughs> My biggest, my biggest fear, fear is, is performing making a follow-up to Vineyard Nights. <laughs> I was going to say, my biggest fear is performing Vineyard Nights live at Beach Road Weekend oh my 2021. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm getting the pre-sweats right now. <laughs> Can't you see my eyes? <laughs> so, yeah, I get that this is just, again, exhibit Z, lowercase z of Pete knows how to do it better than anybody else. Um. But but that that is a legitimate fear. You're like I'm not, like not going to be able. You to don't sleep. want to. Do yeah, that. I don't want to do it. He's get, he's given me the option. The person donated the thousand dollars. They're like, you can refund it. Wait, now. one you, person did it. Yes, it was one person down donated a thousand. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I love marbles and I support <laughs> that. But like, what the fuck are y'all doing? <laughs> like, what are you that's doing? What that's what I'm saying. Like, instantly, it was like a thousand dollars. Like a thousand dollar donation. What? All right. I don't want to put you on the spot. Are you going to do something with that thousand dollars? You're like save it, or like uh, maybe use do it? karaoke, or I'm going to refund it. So the option was like I can give the thousand dollars back and not do karaoke, or I keep it and do karaoke. Here's the move. I think this is everybody wins, including plot twist me. <laughs> <laughs> I love when we know the open as we're doing it. Um, Everybody wins, including me. You take the $1,000 and hire an all-star band Ooh. consisting of, like, guys from Houndmouth, mm -hmm. Deej. I'll do it for free. Okay. I'll be in the all-star band for free. We can even, like, do a uh, – maybe, I don't know, maybe spend half the money on hiring musicians, half the money on a hype video – Okay. promoting that you got featuring maybe like one brad garrett or something right exactly like, hey everybody this is brad garrett <laughs> and it's like friday night uh like myers cody appleby uh uh i'm realizing now i don't know how to say kellen's last name capener capener yeah i was gonna say Kappinger. Hmm. i know someone who's last there's name. no g in there there isn't no 
Okay, I'm confusing it with, and actually she's been on the podcast, uh, Sarah Coppinger, which yes. I'm realizing as I say her name, I don't know how to say her last name. Has she been on the podcast? Yeah, she was on. She was on one of the hot guys and Weathermen. She was a. Fo- she was the only phone, phone guest friend? in the history of <laughs> hot guys and Weathermen. That was the really weird hot guys and Weathermen where we built. Our hot that, guy. That was an incredible graphic that we tweeted out. Just, just absolute Frank Psychotic. Guy. <laughs> the weirdest thing. I remember mine was. Uh, I just remember mine had uh, Steve Carell's chest. Such a weird pick. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So it'd be like Myers, Appleby. But what's the Cody, play here? Like, where, Kapener, what are we getting Bean. here? Like we got a band. What are we doing? Like a live. That seems even worse for me because then I'm like. I have to do karaoke in front of a live band of, like, all-star musicians. So here's what we could do, not to get too inside podcast. We would have – we pick the song, have the musicians track their stuff. So, like, I could be, like, the de facto musical director or whatever. Be like, hey, uh, Matt, can you play – can you like, you play guitar on this song. You play – and just send me – the stems of or the the track of your isolated part i'd put it together and then we'd, we'd make a video of like then just do a video of you kind of like dummy dummy like kind of p- miming playing along to it and then you you've seen videos like that before i don't actually i don't know how you spend your youtube time but where someone will be like will post like a, a cover on youtube and like they're playing all the instruments. Oh, and it's and like box, box, right, box, something box, like that. Yeah. So we could do that, and we'd play that, and you would uh, you would do the vocals. I so, could also. So it would be a video instead of like a instead of like a stream. No, the backing band would be on video. You would be very live. You'd be very this live. Doesn't doesn't like mitigate any of the anxiety though. Can you make it so you hear yourself when? you're doing streaming yes okay so i i could help you out with the vocal chain there so make it so you hear yourself a lot again when uh, this is just gonna be an episode on how to track (laughs) vocals by someone who tracks vocals in his bedroom um (laughs) you make it so in what you're getting in your ears is you with a lot of reverb or you with maybe like a tape delay or something like that and you sound really, really big, and it's like you sound excited by high, how you sound versus if you were to do it completely dry, like the way we're talking right now. Just hearing like your raw voice. Yeah. yeah, I was watching a yeah. song exploder yeah. thing, and it was on Losing My Religion. We'll get to Apple like in a second. <laughs> where <laughs> the guy an ad read before we get into the, the <laughs> opening I'm so subject. excited about that. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> Brunch, hit it, boys! Man, that's another that's another potential open. We we could do we haven't done this in a while. The Ooh. multiple open. That would be a nice treat for the uh for the wash people who never got to experience that. I love that. We we mostly do that when the beginning of the podcast also has a funny line. Mm-hmm. So it'll be like random clip from episode. Hit it, boys. Uh the, what was like, the one time What's that we your did- problem? <laughs> Hit it, boys. <laughs> what was the one time that we did it the entire episode like every few minutes? I don't know, but that was a very long time coming. Yeah, but that was that was like a we felt bad after recording that episode and then you got into post production and yeah, you were like, like I've got an idea. Yeah. And we, it turned out to be incredible. We can all yeah, you can always save it in post. Yeah. It's just a lot of Diane Coffee, Pete and Hit it, boys. Yep. Um, what was I going to say? And n- not Affleck. So we were talking about you. You could sound okay with you. You you'd feel okay about how you sounded. Also, it's karaoke. It's right, not supposed to. That, if you sound that, good, people think you're an asshole. Yeah, and, and like I don't. It's not that like I'm not worried about sounding bad. I'm worried about looking and feeling uncomfortable. Hmm. And that's like the biggest thing for me. So you've never done karaoke no. before. I was gonna say what's made you feel good, what's made you feel bad. I, it's it's the most fun I've had at karaoke, and this doesn't count because it required 
somebody beloved dying. But the, like <laughs> my, my favorite karaoke Jesus. moment was it was the week Chester Bennington died. We did um in the end. Mm-hmm. And I think I did it with like a few friends. They were on Mike Shinoda duty. Okay. Uh, I think like nobody wanted to be Chester. That seems fair. So guess who ended up doing that? And but they didn't consider that it was like three people doing Mike Shinoda, one person featuring every person in the bar That's doing true. Chester Park. Yeah. The the most accomplished I've felt in my life, like the most I've ever felt like, hey, I'm spending my time the right way. I'm doing the right thing here was the uh in the bridge. Uh, so the, I put my trust in you. Da, 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 and then he's like, I put my trust yeah. in that part. The whole freaking bar. And it, God my, damn! If my friends are listening, See? they'd be like, "Dude, there was nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> there was like four people." In yeah, there. one guy was passed it, out. It was like the karaoke DJ sang along with me or something. Felt bad. No, but like, so this. I feel like this is even worse for me being like a karaoke anxiety haver is that like i'm doing it in a room by myself i i can't feed off the energy from like a bar singing along with it or anything um what no go, go ahead i was just gonna check to oh. see how where we were at a time oh okay no yeah we're like we're 21 minutes deep <laughs> let's go we're almost done yeah brunch hit it boys uh no we, there's no energy to uh feed off from like the bar um it's like i don't know it's just gonna be more awkward than like a normal karaoke experience i think so i got a solution gonna get a bunch of strangers you don't know to come in and sit like 10 feet from you okay well that we can recreate the bar setting they won't be drinking though you might just have to be here looking at you you might just have to be here and kind of be like the mc I could be your, I was going to say I could be your Ryan Lewis, but I don't think you want that. I mean, Ryan Lewis doesn't do anything other than, like, make the, make the music. Yeah, and then he makes mediocre Kesha albums that everyone's like, great Incredible. job. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I liked, what song was it, Him? I don't know, the only, uh, oh, yeah, 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 Him, him? like H-Y-M-N. Yeah, I yeah. liked that. That was like, a really good song. That was like an appropriate way of doing the pink move, where you name your song something, Psych! You're saying something else. Except with Pink, it's always like. Did she had a song called? Uh, she had a song called "Blow Me." Below, like below me. No, like... it was actually it was straight up called "Blow Me," and it was uh, "Blow Me One Last Kiss." Okay, <laughs> that's the other way around. Like uh, Britney did, "If You Seek Amy," mm-hmm. which we all know. I didn't know until. Oh, really? That was like a big like, like a year ago. Oh, really? I like legitimately in middle didn't school, know. everybody was like, you, "You know that song? Spell it out." So like college, I didn't know really. What that was. I shit. didn't. I learned that like one year ago, and wow. then I was I, I forget who did that song, but I was like, "Yo, that's very clever." I think it was around the same time uh, Pink was doing her misdirection I, songs. I, I had a discussion about Pink on Friday at Marbles like a couple weeks ago. You know, uh, Mike Fail. No, he from uh, from Twitter. He's a hockey hockey Twitter guy. Okay, um, probably. I apologize. he was he was in there. Um, and we were talking like, uh, talking about Pink, and I was just like, I'm not a fan of Pink. I think that she was too unnecessarily mean to some of like the other her other peers. Oh yeah, like she was super mean to Britney Spears on, yeah. and like Christine Christina Aguilera, and I'm like, you're like doing the same shit. You yeah. just kind of are packaging yourself differently, and like, g- good for you for that. But like, you are being a bully to these people that are doing the same shit as you so i agree with that and i think that that stuff does not hold up well but it'll get to it gets back to like one of my beliefs which is i bet she wants that back not necessarily christina aguilera because they legitimately hated each other and as we've discussed on here there was a real rift caused over christina aguilera picking and choosing her parts in lady marmalade stuff that was written for pink being like hey that's mine, and I get to do it because I'm Christina Aguilera. That's what I fucking thought, like, doing that, <laughs> like, making people flinch and everything. Yeah, you and then got to marry your mother-in-law. And they, yeah, exactly. And then, of course, Pink bringing Linda Perry kind of back, where Linda Perry was probably cashing checks off of Four Non Blondes for ever, which she should have been because What's Up is just a classic song. But when Pink was given a little leeway, where after years and years of being jerked around, where at first they were like, yo – pink you're gonna be a rapper you're gonna be this you're gonna be that i think once she kind of found her direction 
and just got to have some input. <laughs> she was like, can I write songs with Linda Perry? Linda Perry comes in, writes, get this party started. They have a lot of success together. They do the Misunderstood album together. And then Christina Aguilera hears that and is like, I'm working with Linda Perry now. They write Beautiful together. And actually, I think that's just written by Linda Perry. And that only makes the divide between Christina Aguilera and Pink worse. So I agree with you. She was super mean to Christina Aguilera, but they actually had a beef. You're right. A lot of her subject matter was like, oh, I'm so much better. What do I got to go out and like show off my hooters and be like these girls and everything? That sounds really bad right now. Unfortunately, we all heard that and didn't bat an eye. So that's on I did. what the world... You didn't think so. I did. Back in the day, I never liked Pink. Like Re- back in the day, you know I... she was mean? Yeah. Good for you. I was like, Pink is like too mean. Like, she's a pop star. She's being too mean to like these other popular pop stars. It also just sounds like you think she was a hypocrite. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. She... This is weird. This is the second anti-Pink conversation I've had in the last couple of weeks. And I, I quite rate Pink. I like her a lot. I just uh, that's how that's something that people from New Zealand say. You know that I rate rate yeah. like that. I I enjoy them. Yeah, like I properly rate her because it, that's what that means. <laughs> really, it's so cool because that is cool. It, we've discussed how underrated has yeah. gotten out of control, but um, someone like uh, on the the guys on Advanced Analytics, Paul Williams, shout out that absolute legend, will say, "Oh, I I quite rate this player," or, "Hey, like." Check out this artist. I, I I think you'll you'll rate him. I don't I don't I don't uh, dislike that. I think that's a cool move. Yeah. So I I've I've always rated Pink, but one of my friends recently. I had a very fascinating conversation with a friend recently. It was just about music and stuff. So no, who cares? But yeah, it doesn't sound that fascinating to me. Right. N- famously, not a music guy. He was saying that he didn't like Pink, and I was my mind was blown because who doesn't like Pink? And he know he noted that a lot of her songs do. A lot of people hate this with music, where the melody follows a line that already exists, such as that "I want to start a fight" song. Like the riff is like, yeah. and then the melody is like, na 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 na. Oh yeah, I wanna. yeah. So, like Iron Man does that. P- people like that song. Uh, but Pink, do- as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, you must hate Pink because so many of her songs do that. Just like a pill. Is the tired of getting compared to yeah. Dan Britney. Uh, there you yeah. go. Dan yeah. Britney Spears. Yeah. 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 So Pink, a uh, bit of a. Stonks are down. Stonks are down, I guess. Although I, qu- I quite like Pink. People are, some people like you are afraid of doing karaoke. I also hear that some men at certain ages are afraid of what might be going on on top of the head. Why don't you tell me a little something about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, that is – we're talking about – this is a, a big episode of my biggest fears. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we, we, we have officially hit the ad read before we've hit the first topic, which Affleck was going to be a diversion like a from opener. the grapes thing. <laughs> yeah, right. So. We'll get to our first two thoughts coming up, but let's let's hit this read. Uh, one of my biggest fears is karaoke. Another one of my biggest fears is losing my hair, and so uh, I will definitely not shave my head for a thousand dollars. But if you have a similar fear like me of losing your hair, then Keeps should be on your radar because Keeps uh, will help you keep the hair you have before you lose it because at some point you hit a point of no return. Unless you're sure. super duper rich, and then you can, yeah, uh, rich people can make anything happen up up there. That's so, right. Uh, but two out of every three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35. Wow, that's that's a stunning number. Two out of three men, some form of hair loss by the time they turn 35. Father John Misty might be five years into having experienced a little bit of hair loss. Crazy. Wow, that's right. Happy 40th birthday. We'll get to that. If, if we, if we head, get to any way. of our topics, we'll get to that. Uh, more than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. Shout out our friend Jeff. Uh, <laughs> there are only two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss. Keeps offers both. It's an, uh, a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. It's convenient, virtual doctor consultations and medication that are delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't even have to leave your home. And if you know me, that is a big selling point for me. Not trying to leave the house. 
ever. Uh, Low-cost treatments start at just $10 per month and keeps offers generic versions, uh, discreet packaging, and proven results. You know, just in case you don't want your neighbors to be like, oh, damn. Yeah, mind your business. Bill over there. You're right. I saw Bill might be thinning up top. Leave me alone, Carmen. <laughs> yeah, maybe you listen. Maybe you live next door to Pink, and she, she's, she's gonna looking bully. for some. Yeah, yeah. she's looking she's for look, some. Her looking next for new mark. material. Yeah. <laughs> looking for new material. Uh, she'll she'll dump on you if you're starting to lose your hair. No worries about that. Keeps keeps the packaging discreet. Prevention is key. Do something about it before it's too late. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash brunch to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash brunch to get your first month free. Keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash brunch. So we were doing that stream and... Talking about what Pete might want to hear. Then someone naturally said, okay, got to do You Make My Dreams. And I I did a pass on that. I said no. And then later, uh, there was some Twitter back and forth. And I was like, I'll use this to get the Patreon active. We need, I think we were at 208 patrons or something. Get us to 210 and I'll do... Some sort of You Make My Dreams cover by next week, for next week. That would be the, the, the week in which we currently live. So we got there, and I'd like to do a little thinking, too, right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to throw in a little thinking, too. Okay. Because I would like to walk back a take. Oh. I I haven't recorded this or really put together this uh arrangement yet but i i've got it in my brain i understand what it, it's gonna be like it's teaser it'll probably it'll be a lot worse than the hall notes version i think you might prefer the ridge after you hear <laughs> this one Brunch. but i hadn't i i know how that song goes and that's like a very easy song to kind of guess your way through so i was like all right i won't listen to the song and i'll just kind of throw down some ideas and try to put something together from there and on the way over here, I finally put it on. And maybe it's because I've ignored the song so much because I don't want to be overexposed to it. But I was like, man, is there ever really a time where you hear that song and you say to somebody, "Not right you've now. wasted your money <laughs> yeah. for putting that on? Especially when I know that they're getting $1,000 to maybe do karaoke. I think that... I would not. I, I'll never be upset to hear that song. I think so, That's, but I, I don't know if that was the original take. Anyway, I think it was just like, "Hey, just wait a few minutes; it'll be on." At any rate, that was that's a that was your original take. But my point was like, I like to be the guy that makes everybody happy. Mm. True. So, I mean, that's obviously a great song. Not super Hall and Oatesy, but just a uh, a great song. That song. That song. Very, very, very simple. The drums in that song are just the whole way through. Like, there's nothing going on. It's so simple. Just a rocking, rocking performance from Daryl Hall. That guy is the freaking man, of course. So I'm throwing together. I don't know when I'll do it. Maybe for the Friday episode or something like that. Uh, there will be some sort of you make my dreams thing. I also realized, because you pointed it out to me, I was calling it the wrong thing. It's, it's not you make my dreams come true. It's just you make my dreams. It actually, and then I jokingly said, "Okay, fine, like, stay tuned for you make my dreams in parentheses come true." Uh, it is listed as that some places. Parenthetically, yeah, gotcha. We've talked about you're. I think you're a big fan of the yeah whatever you can get in there. Yeah, just basically jam it in. Yeah, throw in a little uh, presented by Bud Light. <laughs> Yeah, or mango like super long uh super long song titles that just don't need to be like just super unnecessary parentheticals mm. just very funny i should have done like i mean vineyard nights are the only things i could do it with but like if there's like a really like a one word song title i'm not talking about doing like a 1975 thing where you call it like grace in parent and then in parentheses and, and then like, like yeah. Or you looked at me in the night and blah 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 
<laughs> so it doesn't happen very often, but whenever we bring up the 1975 and just talk about how fucking stupid they are sometimes. <laughs> I think the worst 1975 conversation we ever had was when we were like breaking down their music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were like with we had Nora on. Yeah, we were like these guys are so fucking and annoying. She was, and she was great, but there's no one better to talk music with than uh, than Nora. But we were like so hyper focused on like, what do we think of this song? What do we think of that song? And that may have been it's like more. The- I think it's better to just zoom out on the 1975 and be like, hey. You know what I bet the 1975 would do? I bet they'd make a song where like they did this or something. They're so stupid. What do you think they're doing right now? And that was like the Fucking most com- Healy. complex review that we've ever had because like, we were like, I think this album's pretty good, but you know what? It's also very fucking annoying. Yeah, yeah. I, lo- I love them uh, so much. So, yeah, so much. I, I love their I, I love so them. Much. I love them so much. I do. I, I, I hate so many of the things that they do, but yeah. I love th- when they hit... One of my favorite bands. We missed them at Lollapalooza. There was, I, I remember they were starting and we could hear them coming out because we did hear them say like, hey, with 1975, we're your new favorite band. And I was like, only you, Matt. <laughs> only you. Um, they. I tweeted about um, about uh, if you're too shy. Yeah. Parenthetically, let me know. L- L- LMK. Yep. Uh, I tweeted about that being like, I think that is the best 1975 song, and like maybe one of my favorite songs ever. I now. am such a sucker for. We did uh, there. There was a uh, 1975 request on the long ass stream, Ooh. so I didn't. Uh, I didn't even plug in my electric guitar, but I just like picked up my Strat and just did like the. I just played like one second of. Hell yeah! I love. I love. Um, what's that? Love me. Yeah. Love Me is one of my favorite pop songs of the last 10 years. That one's I love real, that song they, I mean, so much. They are so good when they're good. Yeah. Like when they try. Love It If We Made It is yeah. so good. Uh, also an incredible video that I just watched for the first time like maybe a month or two ago. Yeah. It's got an awesome video. It's uh, very chaotic. A new Bruntouchable said that they really, really appreciated our conversation on Love It If We Made It. Really? And just how chaotic that song is that it hits you. With, and I, whenever someone's like, hey... Uh, you guys nailed it on this. I'm like, no clue what we were talking about. But uh, they said that we were big on uh, just how okay, like it just hits you right in the face with uh, we're fucking in a car doing heroin, like <laughs> saying controversial things just for the hell of it. That yeah. came up pretty recently too because uh, I think I tweeted like, what was what's your favorite opening lyric of all time or something like that. Ooh, pr- PD prompts. Yeah, and uh, that uh, that came up. So did um. Yours uh, has to be. Uh, yeah. Pour me another drink and punch me in the yeah, face. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, I tweeted about the uh, uh, if you're too shy, let me know. And their touring manager DM'd me and was like, next time they come to Boston, I got you. Oh, my so, goodness. I man, Let's go. I That's another thing I miss about the world being the way it used to be. Every now and then running into some free tickets yeah. or something. Like, or hey, like, wh- wh- what are you doing this this day? And I was like, I don't know. What do you got for me? Yeah. Becoming Twitter friends with uh, Chris Thomas was the best thing in the world. Now yep. we know Houndmouth. Yeah, I know. Seriously. Now we know Chris. Um, yeah, we've. I don't know if we've talked about it, but Chris reps Jack Harlow. So yep. massive congratulations to Chris. That's got to be a wild ride. It's got to be a, a quite, quite uh, enjoyable past year or so for him. Yeah. Holy smokes. And yeah, like he's probably got like a little like that thing you do thing going on. Right. I mean, now it's like now it's just like clear that like Jack Harlow is Jack Harlow and like very established and everything. But like I'm talking about like going through like that, like rise from. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, keep an eye on this guy to now. If you're like, hey, have you heard Jack Harlow? Someone's like, yeah, yeah. What am I dead? I rate him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) In fact, I properly rate him. Um, so someone was like, you make my dreams come true. We're doing the, you make our dreams. I'd like to walk back the, you make my dreams, uh, jukebox take. And how does that, how is it that there was some connection there to Affleck? So we're close on the Patreon. That was it. We're getting close on the Patreon, but the beginning of the month, we lost some patrons because that happens when people have the choice to jump ship a lot of people take that option so we're at 208 right now we're 17 away from affleck week and if you haven't seen 
the content that is coming out with Ben Before Affleck. Before you get to Affleck, um, we have another ad read. I, uh, and you mentioned the word ship and uh, been thinking about... I, I got I started watching uh, Below Deck yeah. this week. Quite quite an enjoyable show. Yeah. Absolute trash TV, but quite enjoyable. Uh, I will give Ellen that win because she's been telling me to like watch some trash TV. Uh, and I tried Below Deck. I, I enjoyed it. So um, Below Deck sounds like the name of a pink song. <laughs> Brunch, 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 brunch. Hit it, boys. Below me deck. Yeah, like blow, blow deck. Um, did so, you did you really want to hit that read? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I I did have it built into a. a we're gonna do some tidy spires coming up, but it's that's a real question right now. Yeah, We've uh, might be on the chopping can't, can't block. podcast forever, folks. <laughs> you can't podcast forever, and plus we got to get that grape stock in there, but. Coming off of the Tidy Spires conversation, I was going to say, now that Sam Ellinger is a cult, as we would have discussed on mm-hmm. Tidy Spires, still might coming up, um, we got to figure out who's QB1 going forward. Is it Casey Thompson? Is it my ideal pick? Hudson Card? What a name. That's an incredible name, but man, Casey Thompson's my guy. Oh, really? You're, 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 you're yeah, team, team Casey? Yeah, so good at the end of last year. Yeah, I... Uh, I think I want Hudson Card. Ooh, I, th- I would like this being a uh, a little divisive Dueling thing in the podcast. Texas yeah. fans from Boston who only like Texas because they went to Texas one time. That's right. And went to a game, which, also, I mean, folks, do that. Also, it doesn't even really matter because Bijan Robinson is just going to win the Heisman. You think so? Quite possibly. Sure, it could be. Yeah, I don't know. Could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and that was somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Brunch, hit it, boys. College. <laughs> we should, our our college football one will be called college football, and it'll be a bunch of uh, just like cows. <laughs> And then like football. Tim Kalishaw. Tim, yeah. College football. We will bring in Tim Kalishaw. You think that he would do, join our podcast? Why not? I bet if we're like, hey, we're... He's a he's a Dallas guy, isn't he? Dallas Morning News, I think. Yeah. Right? So like, if we were like, hey, you want to talk some college football, specifically he'd be like, the Longhorns, Yeah, he'd probably be like, sure. Okay, so you think it's Casey. I think it's... Uh, I think it's the funny guy because he's a real card. <laughs> and uh, we're going to get there. We're going to have to go to Austin once things are normal, which we're getting closer. Uh, Chaboy recently got Vax number two. Hell yeah. Survived the, oh my goodness, as sick as I've been in a while. Really, really bad. But also consider I am, Lord forgive me, a guy. And it's true. no one is more... Dramatic. A little boy, little crybaby, than a guy who has gotten sick. That's right. So we all know that. Feeling good now, though? Feeling, I mean, better, better. than I was before yeah. is there's there's being 100% and there's not being 0% anymore. Both are as good. Yeah, it's, that's it's, fair. It's, it feels so, that's so good to not have the worst headache of my life, to not have the chills, to not be sweat. I, I was really, really in uh, in rough shape. I've, I've just been drinking nothing but Gatorade for the past two days, which, holy smokes, there is so much sugar in Gatorade. Yeah. I'm going to be the Your only person to get... a mess. Yeah, yeah. So much sugar in that. Just terrible. But we're going to get to Austin. We're going to see the boys. Casey Thompson, Hudson Card. Maybe they play both of them. Could be fun. And when we go, you've seen us travel before. We like to travel in style. We like to look good. We put the Efron filter on the photos. You've seen them before. We do that, okay? So if we're going to be in style, we got to get stuff from away. Mm -hmm. A modern lifestyle brand that creates thoughtful products for every traveler and every kind of trip. They started with the perfect suitcase crafted with features that make travel more seamless. And now when travel looks more different than ever before, good point. You can count on Away's range of suitcases, bags, and accessories whenever you take that next trip. So catch us with them Away products. So whether it's a trip to the corner store, a weekend away, or an extended stay with friends and family, 
We're all navigating the current reality of travel, but no matter your destination or style, Away's suitcases, bags, and accessories all come in a variety of colors, sizes, and materials to suit your needs and inspire your future travels. And that last part is so true. Anything you could need, that's a frustrating part of going on vacation when you got your kind of standard luggage. Ah, well, I'm going for two days and this suitcase would be way too big. I could cram everything into this thing. And then you get into the situation, which I hate with travel, which is you you pack light, you use a, a smaller suitcase, maybe you make it so it's just going to be your carry-on, mm-hmm. and then once you've stayed, you've had your trip, you're jamming everything back in there, and you've That's got tough. the dirty laundry with the clean laundry. This sounds and you like don't, a Jerry Seinfeld bit. And you don't want to make the bag smell bad and everything. It's a whole thing. You don't want to cross-contaminate. You don't want to cross-contaminate. That's exactly it. Every Away suitcase comes with an interior organization system that includes a built-in compression pad to help you get more in and a hidden and removable laundry bag that separates your dirty clothes. That's my favorite it's thing about changer. Away, other than the options, the colors, I I like the uh the uh the charging station. That Comes was with a portable I think, charger. That rules. That was I believe what put away on the map. That's what got my friends and family talking about it, which was, "Hey, have you seen this? You could plug right in." And that's so smart because when you're spending a long day at the airport, moving around, I mean, you're in the cab on the way to the airport. It's just so see easy. See the people to burn. sitting on the floor next to the outlet because yeah. they they're trying to charge their phone before they get on the plane. Nah, get comfy, sit down, keep that suitcase right in front of you. Maybe use it as a as a little foot stand mm-hmm. while you charge your phone. You're the most comfiest guy in the airport. And durability. We may be using away products to go to a college football game, but there ain't gonna be turnover every three or four Ooh. years with these things because all of away's suitcases are designed to last a lifetime with durable exteriors that can withstand even get this the roughest of baggage handlers. Oh. So you got some real street toughs Let's- with the baggage. Away's got gotcha. you. Let's a promo when we go to to Texas. We'll we'll throw it throw our away bag with the uh, the defense of the Longhorns defense. We'll have them that's throw right. a few hits on it. Football podcast. Everybody knows. Everybody knows what's up. Yeah, we'll have them handle it nice and rough. Yeah, you and got it'll some, come out no worse for wear. You got some. Yeah, you get you got some some real characters. Some people who really want to mess up that luggage. The roughest of baggage handlers. They no shot. No shot at messing with Away's stuff. So start your... Oh, uh, you know what? I'll also note that uh, there's a 100-day trial on everything Away makes. So oh. you can take the product on the road. You can use it. It's a long time. Not just have it, figure out if your stuff fits in there. Use it. Because if you decide it's not for you, you can return any non-personalized item for a full refund during that period. No ifs, ands, or asterisks. But I think using... And luggage is such a big thing. It's something you don't think about until you realize... You don't have the right stuff. When yeah. you got away, you know you've got the right stuff. So use it. Take it for a stroll. I think away has a pretty good idea that you're not going to be sending it back because they know what they're sending you, and that's the good stuff. They also offer free shipping and returns on any order within uh, U.S., U.K., Europe, and Canada. Start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases at awaytravel.com slash brunch. That's awaytravel.com slash brunch. Do we talk about Affleck or grapes or do the tidy spires? I, I'm afraid to do the Affleck stuff because... Look, that's now become the crux of the episode. <laughs> Not doing Affleck yeah. is the crux of the episode? Good. Okay, we'll save that because there is some Affleck updates. There's the video that's out there, and there's the fact that he's hanging out with J-Lo. But what are we going to have for Affleck week if we shoot our wad with all this these Affleck news updates? That's true. Get us to Affleck week so we can do yeah. this in a timely manner. I don't understand it, folks. I do want to talk 17 about... 17 people. This it isn't shouldn't be that hard. I do want to talk about the thousand dollars to freaking <laughs> like drop Trace's hand, draw a turkey hand, do the e- easy stuff. Just do it. I um I I do really want to talk about the Affleck update that came out this week. So please please go to patreon.com slash listen to brunch and sign up so that we can do Affleck week immediately. We this is a pressing issue. The the update uh, on Affleck that we had this past week with okay. the, the, the TikTok lady. So it's it's settled. We're yes. not talking about Affleck yes, on this we episode. Are not. We can close the book roughly like 45 50 minutes into into this episode. Okay. Uh grapes. You ever have uh 
You ever have cotton candy grapes? No, I don't think so. I've been seeing them at the supermarket recently. The hell is that? It says, cotton candy grapes taste just like cotton candy. I'm like, they can't taste just like cotton candy. So I bought some grapes. Speaking of $1,000, you know, grapes are so expensive. Are they? Grapes are out of control expensive. You go to buy grapes, a little bag of grapes, you get up there, you ring it up. What do you think it's asking from you? Is it is it uh, weight? I think so, yeah. Weight-based? Yeah. Um, I don't know, like... I don't. I have no idea how to calculate that. I got a, I got a, a conservative bag of grapes. Okay, nothing crazy, nothing huge, nothing small. Nine dollars. What? Yeah, grapes are so expensive. Nine dollars. Grapes are crazy expensive. So you could buy a that's bottle buy a of banana. wine. You could buy a bottle of wine right. for like less than nine dollars, and that's. That's grapes. That's a good kind of grapes. Yeah, yeah. That's my kind of grapes. That's right. Okay, so nine dollar ba- thing of grapes, and I, you never grunt through the grapes. You pick at them the day that you get them, and then you just kind of forget about them. They're yeah, grapes. I feel like I have like three grapes, and I'm like, that's enough grapes for me. Yeah, grapes. I, I don't know why I do. Every now and then, I'm like, ooh, grapes is a good thing to have. Where you just need it. You want to grab a little something. You just grab a few grapes, and then you do that. You do that for one day. You see, take one handful at some point, and the next day you're like, I'm kind of hungry, and you're like, what am I going to eat grapes? I did that yesterday. <laughs> I'm just going to be a grape guy. So you go to Burger King or something. <laughs> so that's, that's, where, that's where grapes really get you because the $9 to get them, and then like $8 when you go out because you don't want to keep eating grapes because you just got grapes yesterday. <laughs> grapes, man. That, that grape lifestyle really gets out of control. So I got these cotton candy grapes, tried them, I'll be damned if they don't taste exactly like really? cotton candy. And I, I feel so weird about it because I got it being like, will these taste like cotton candy? They do. And I really don't like that they really? taste just like cotton Yeah. I re- it doesn't seem like a thing that you would want to eat and have it taste like cotton candy. It's so weird. It was just way too weird for me. I don't know huh. how they make them if they're injecting them with cotton candy flavor <laughs> or something. Cotton candy, I think, is... Cotton candy can be a flavor of two things. Cotton candy and gum otherwise nah toothpaste cotton candy toothpaste exists yeah or like the um the, like the fluoride at the dentist maybe that's what i'm thinking they'll do about. okay i i've done that gum uh, with that before that they have that for cotton candy and it tastes just like cotton candy interesting okay at any rate cotton candy grapes weird but i did think of a cool little prank Ooh. all right when when me and the fellas when we get the vaccine okay like mm-hmm. doing it big yeah, talking about having some friends over. Mm-hmm. So, got some friends over, watching. What were you talking about? Below deck. Yep. We're watching below deck. Buckle up. It's gonna be one of those nights. Okay. Put out some food. Hey, got some grapes over there. You guys want to <laughs> jump in there? Imagine <laughs> eating cotton candy grapes without knowing. Without knowing. Without getting like these crazy signs every time you walk into the grocery store, like these taste just like cotton candy, that would be pretty weird. That would be uh, that would be a, a quite an experiment. Throw you for a loop, huh? Maybe get like an Ashton Kutcher cameo, and and like your buddy eats the first cotton candy grape, and you're like, ha, punked. punked. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a cameo of Ashton Kutcher being like, I guess your friend got some cotton candy grapes at the grocery store. And he thinks that it's like a prank that you ate one without knowing it. And now you're like, why does this taste like cotton candy? <laughs> and he paid me $400 to say punked, which I haven't done in 15 years. <laughs> are, are celebrities lying on cameos when they say, hey, hey, like, I, I hear it's your birthday and your friend Pete tells me that ba 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 ba. No, he had like a small little message I had thing. One and he tweet. Threw, yeah, yeah. yeah, he had a small right, like a, a tweet's worth of characters to say like birthday, thirty five, Raymond, hungry, <laughs> Raymond, or something like. Go, I didn't, I didn't going have through rough to tell patch. you anything. <laughs> you spell going like through. through it. <laughs> we should do cameos where like if one of us senses the other is a little down, we got the, the other a cameo. It's like. Hey Pete, your friend DJ tells me you got the blues. 
just Gilbert Gottfried being like, yeah. heard, you, heard you got a, a bout of crippling depression. Heard you're not feeling yourself. <laughs> Can't quite pinpoint why. Well, Cheer up, buddy. I wonder, like, I wonder what, where, like, not necessarily, like, the line would be out, but I wonder, like, how... Because uh, I know that like the people who do cameo can choose which ones they want. They can choose to fulfill them or not. Oh, yeah. So like I wonder like if you could like see where the line is for certain people to be like, okay, I'm willing to do this for the payment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> sent like several requests from different accounts using different credit cards. Yeah, and see which one they'll do. And I mean, the, the what will be bad is if you end up getting someone who just doesn't give enough. Th- that's says tough, yes yeah. to all of them and then you're out like six thousand dollars and they don't give an f and they're just like they're really mailing in they're like right yeah you're pretty sad yeah to uh, cheer live love laugh pal yeah our cheer up all cameo right, is a thing <laughs> our cheer up cameo is a thing and can we use it like the way i'm talking about using it with us is with like an unsolicited thing so we're doing the podcast. You're like, you know, DJ hasn't really felt himself these last couple of weeks. He hasn't said anything to me. We haven't right. like we, we talk about life and everything. He hasn't really brought up that he's not necessarily doing too great. But I'm sensing a little something. So let me just uh, hit him with a surprise <laughs> like cameo saying like, hey, I've noticed you're not the same as you usually are. <laughs> Just using Cameo instead of having any uh, direct conversation with yeah. the person that you know. To check in yeah. on how somebody's doing. I mean, checking in on friends is the way to go anyway. That's very actually a very expensive way to do it. Yeah. So let's check in on football with the Tidy Spires podcast. And we're figuring out how do we spell Spires? Would it be spelt S-P-Y-R-I-E-S? I think that's my vote because it phonetically makes sense, even though Spirals is with an I. You suggested we just abandon the name and just call it something else. <laughs> Clack and Pads. Clack and Pads is really good. It's, a, it's a, actually like a good podcast name, I think. Sounds like it would be a thing. Clack and Pads. Uh, thinking too. I, I just had the idea that we should make it uniform across all. Uh, where we do like, Blanken something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thinking too, Clack and Pads. I mean, Thinking too is the best podcast name ever. I would change our podcast from Brunch <laughs> to Thinking Too. Uh, I wouldn't. Brunch is uh, that classic name, and that's that classic brand. Can't just abandon it now. Not when we're 17 away from Affleck Week. People would be so confused. Uh, other options for, and this will now be instead of, we're, we're going to do some tidy spires. We won't do that. We won't talk about the NFL draft. We'll just say a bunch of different names for it. Clack and Pads is good. Mm-hmm. Um Joe Oklahoma's a lighthearted football podcast. It's pretty good. <laughs> Halftime Bros, a football podcast hosted by two men. That's just the name of it, or is ha- it like, that the whole thing? Halftime Bros. Halftime Bros, and then par- 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 parenthetical, right? A football podcast hosted by two men. That would be the easiest. Okay, then I'm not listening. Title <laughs> <laughs> ever. N- have no interest in checking that out. Okay, that's my yeah right. If 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 they feel part of their cell job is like, and plus we're dudes. <laughs> Got it. Thanks. Never mind. I will listen to any other football podcast. Um, Tidy Spires, we've already got a Ooh. podcast about football, not Kyrie Irving wearing ill-fitting boat shoes. What if we did uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a, uh, a joke for the, uh, the, the, the movie that we always reference where the returner just shoots everybody on the way. What was that called? Uh, the Last Son? The Last Boy Scout? The Last Boy Scout. I think so, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. I watched. I I looked up that clip, by the way, and uh, just as ridiculous as maybe you you might have even undersold it. And the most ridiculous part about it is, and we, we still haven't seen that movie. We've just seen that clip. The craziest part about it is, you hit the Wikipedia page. It says the Last Boy Scout is a 1991 American buddy action comedy. <laughs> You're like, oh, that was that's a comedy, <laughs> right? That's like the most tragic beginning of a movie. You, you see, like this troubled athlete doing drugs and then killing people and then killing himself and then killing himself on yeah. national tv in front of everybody and everyone by like, the way in that scene it is raining so hard that they never would have played football on that i know it's, it's raining a so real hard. mess out there very unrealistic okay what other names do we have um 
All right, I'll admit this one's a little weird. Uh, Yumble Rooski, a delicious football podcast where the hosts eat some tasty foods and talk about football, hosted by two men, Jerry Scones and Snack Del Rio. Presented by Bud Light Presented by Bud Light (laughs) Seltzer, Lemonade, Strawberry Daiquiri, Mango Flavor, featuring... Jerry Scones, Max Scones, Daniel Scones, and Snack Del Rio, <laughs> a.k.a. Uh, oh, how about this one? Clown Posts. Ooh, Clown Posts could be our shitty NHL Gifts Twitter uh, football Twitter account. That's true. <laughs> I love I love the uh, – because whenever uh, anybody ratios somebody and they, uh, on a bad tweet, they – post a screen cap of the the madden play and it yeah. says it just says clown post. oh yeah clown post would be a good a good shit posting nfl podcast i like when people ooh clown underscore posts is not taken hmm. clown posts no underscore is taken i like when people refer to themselves with the clown emoji when texting i was talking to some friends yesterday about doge and this was before Do- doge went crazy on uh tuesday the day we're recording this but monday it was just kind of hanging around we were talking about nfts because there was a uh top shot drop and i i monday i was very sick with um i I want to make it sound like it's the end of the world so i won't say very sick but like i was quite under the weather and i just i was in bed all day so it was the most time i've spent online ever in my life sounds horrible it was so horrible um (laughs) And one of the things I did, I was like, ooh, there's an NBA Top Shop drop. I'll get some of those things. So I was texting with friends about NFTs because they're into it. And I'm just kind of sitting on the sidelines. And every now and then I'll grab a pack. And they were talking about how they were in on Dogecoin and jumped out early. So they were saying, like, I had this many Dogecoin and then clown emoji. Oh, because they sold. They're dunking on themselves. I like that. I, I do like that. My a lot. other friend is it's our friends uh, from it's our friends, Doug and Miles. OK. And they were saying, like, I had this many clown emoji. Oh, yeah. Well, I had this many clown emoji. I like that. Just one upping each other. And how like, big of a clown you are. <laughs> right. We should do that when we send each other ideas for the podcast. Just toss a clown emoji next to it. So we're safe in case it's a bad idea. They're all bad ideas. Like, hey, what if we do an entire podcast where we, we say, oh, wait, how, let's week. get to Affleck for a second, even though we weren't even pl- really planning on talking about Affleck anyway, but we were like, oh, we should talk about that clown emoji. <laughs> <laughs> we, we would all agree that that was a good idea, though. Yeah. Uh, texting should give us the option, by the way, to do more than just exclamation point, thumbs up, thumbs down, heart. And question mark. Throw a clown emoji in there? I would love to be able to throw a clown emoji Same. on there. Signal does let you do that. Really? Yeah. They let you do whatever you want. So oh, wow. I'll throw like the thinking man emoji on somebody's thing, but I'd like to be able to send a text and then immediately put a clown emoji on my own text. And you, know how, you know how it says like in like the preview too, where it's like DJ Bean laughed at blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, DJ Bean clowned. DJ just Bean tossed a clown emoji. On the text that he just sent you. You I haven't like had that. a chance to respond to it yet, but he wanted to make sure that <laughs> he got a clown emoji in there first. So let's do a little uh, Joke Lahomas, a.k.a. Yumble Ruski, with uh, my guy. Who you want to be? You want to be Snack Del Rio or are you uh, or are you Jerry Scones? I'll be Snack Del Rio. I, I feel like you're more Snack Del Rio. I'm more Jerry Scones. Okay. I think that people who eat a lot of scones are – I think that like scones is more – People like me. I think the older person has to automatically be the scones guy. Right. Scones are dope. I mean, I remember fucking with scones. I don't the, know if I've eaten the a moment scone in my I life. learned about them. My mom got me a scone one time. First time uh, I went to Starbucks when Starbucks started making their way over here. I was like, "What do you, what do you say? We get you a scone or something?" And I was like, "Never had one before," and it was insane. I don't even think I've ever had a scone. Scones are so good. Scones are like they're like biscuits. Except I'm sure just like million times worse for you. Yeah, definitely. Because it's like biscuits with all sorts of sugary stuff going on. Maybe there'll be a glaze on top of it. Scones are, are the truth. Folks, if you listen to the podcast, follow us on any of the various social media platforms. Let us know in the comments if you do if you like scones and have ever had a scone. 
we'll give you a retweet or right. maybe we'll hit you with a link to then go to the Patreon and maybe comment there. Maybe we'll, we'll just throw a clown emoji at you. You never know. So the NFL draft has come and gone as we do a little. This is a hybrid podcast between college football <laughs> and scone bros. <laughs> It's where the college football players become <laughs> the, uh, the, the men over uh, over over scrown pass or scrown passes. <laughs> there you go, scone passes. That's what I meant. Sco- oh, scone passes. Pass. passes. It's like screen passes, except it doesn't sound anything like it. Over scrown, <laughs> <laughs> over scrown, <laughs> scrown pa- ski- uh, screen. Pa- <laughs> you you know that. You know that expression, overthrown screen passes from football? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Lord Lord, forgive me. If you watched the New England Patriots last year, you were p- seeing a lot of overthrown and underthrown, underthrown screen yeah. passes. Cam Newton really struggling with screen passes, checkdowns. Any kind of pass. The whole nine. Just a real not great passer. He was thinking passer. two yards shorter than where the pass was supposed to be. Uh, had the NFL draft. What'd you think? I think my favorite moment, personally, I think a lot of people's favorite moment, Jalen Waddle gets drafted, immediately quits his family (laughs) on live television. That was incredible. So incredible. He gets the call, gets off the phone, everybody starting to celebrate and everything, just extremely calmly removes himself from that situation. And it was a, it was a tight turn. Like yeah. he got up and like shifted 90 degrees and w- just walked straight. Did you also notice what he did though in that in the, so he shifted, you're right. He was like, "All right, getting out of here." Gave a very quick look back. Did he? As if to be like, All "I know right, what one I'm last doing." Time. <laughs> Let's see what these people look like for one last time it's before the car I'm pulling never... away in the in the the person looking through like the back rear view it's, windshield. It's uh, a Junior Soprano after I forget who gets – one of the guys that's supposed to, I believe, whack Tony in one of the first couple of seasons says something that Junior doesn't like. And they're meeting in the – they're meeting on that side street or whatever in Alley, and Junior just doesn't like what he says. So the guy gets back – his driver gets back to the car. I forget the driver's name, but he ends up getting whacked too. But he comes back. Junior's like, yeah, I, I didn't like that guy's tone. So – He's like, oh, hold on a second. Wait, before we go, walks over, shoots the guy. And then as the car is driving away, Junior just (laughs) kind of pokes his head out, like looking like, okay, all done. (laughs) That's what, without anybody dying, without anybody dying, Jalen Waddle kind of did one last. All right. What all the people who matter to me in my life look like. Thanks for getting here. I'll get off. (laughs) This, all right, this is this me. Is, this is my stop. This is me. I don't know if you noticed. Uh, Mac Jones walks. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. People were very excited about the video of Mac Jones walking. I mean, you can you can make fun of like the overreaction to that all you want, but that walk was hilarious. I didn't realize. I didn't spend enough time with it, so I saw the the, the side by side video. Of Bill Belichick walking. That's stupid because yeah. like, that, like, so it's just two people walking. Two people walking and like walking with a. Uh, just like sort of a determined walk. With a purpose. I yeah. quote tweeted it with people do be walking. <laughs> yeah. And it was not the same walk at all. Uh, no. Mac Jones's no. walk was hilarious. Somebody somebody said, the, I think it was maybe Feidelberg said he walks like an aunt. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of funny. I immediately said that he walks like he has birthing hips. And it's quite correct, I think. I don't know how to feel, but I mean, I, I've kind of. I, I'm trying to course correct on the fly with. Uh, my tone when it comes to Mac Jones. I'm I'm not a big Mac Jones fan. Didn't Same. think the, didn't don't think that he'll necessarily be anything special in the NFL. And my main issue has been that he looks too much like me. And hey, Kendrick Lamar voice. I love myself. <laughs> I am the way God intended me to be. God was feeling some kind of way that day. Apparently, maybe don't want maybe don't want your quarterback to be that though. Like yeah, I wouldn't. I, I love myself. I don't know necessarily know if I want the New England Patriots quarterback to be five and a half feet tall. Right. I'd like for him to be able to see over Trent Brown. Right. Uh, although Cam Newton, very tall, had no problem just whipping it at the <laughs> offensive line's helmets. Cam Newton. Cam Newton's bad throws. Also, like Cam Newton made his bad throws with purpose. 
Like he never maybe like maybe lightly I'm... underthrew somebody. He was like, I am going to throw the ball so hard at three yards before where the ball should be. Uh, maybe our podcast name should be uh like uh like banging helmets, banging or just like uh pelting helmets or something. <laughs> yeah, with uh, how about like eating scones? <laughs> That's right. Something like Same that. Same thing. Something like that. Um, so, I'm. I don't want people to be too mean to Mac Jones because I'd like, like to give him a chance. But I'd also like to. Uh, I'd also like to let everybody know that I'm quite disappointed. Yeah, oh yeah, same. But, but there is like, I think that as the world is realizing that we've been body shaming for ever, like everybody body shames everybody, and we're kind of learning to not do that anymore because it's just one of those weird things where like, how did people not think like, oh, that this probably makes a lot of people <laughs> feel really bad about themselves. But body shaming when it comes to sports. Is the, different. The you got to kind of, move right. because the, their job is to be athletes. Right, exactly. Um, so that's like the Pablo Sandoval stuff when, like, he was just like gigantic. And, and it seems like he. It also seems like Pablo Sandoval has a, a problem. Right. Um, where like they they really need to be managed. But we've also learned in sports that you can look very out of shape and still be extremely capable of or or like the opposite can be true too like you can be in unbelievable shape and it doesn't mean that you're going to be great i think about that a lot where I, I i won't name names but when i covered hockey i would look at certain players and i'd be like wow you wouldn't think it but this person i think is the best skater on the bruins and it was someone who didn't play a lot and really for the nhl's purposes was not very good so things like scouting combines and everything where you're like, wow, like that person just like runs so well. They have like the most natural strides I've ever seen. That couldn't be right. And you'll be wrong for thinking, OK, well, I should take this guy instead of this guy. Like you really do have to apply how well do they play their their sport. But uh, I think the way I listen to too much dip on the Wash Network. Shout out KJ, Dave, Dylan did that episode. And uh, they agreed. They said they said Mac Jones first team all trash bod where like Phil Kessel has been accused of Mm -hmm. that in the past. And Phil Kessel is one of the fastest skaters in the NHL. So you can. The wild thing about it with Mac Jones, though, is he doesn't look out of shape when he's in uniform. It's just that picture with him with a cigar. And it's just like, good Lord. He, I mean, he doesn't have any muscle definition. Absolutely none. He, but that doesn't mean anything for a quarterback. True. Really doesn't mean anything. Uh, but, like, he just, like, all-time doughy body and, like, also oversized nipples. <laughs> like, it's just yeah, a lot's the, happening there. Yeah, we, uh, we did a show at work where it was, like, a draft show, and... After a few minutes, like five minutes after they drafted Mac Jones, uh, the great Burt Breer was like, you guys have so have shown so many nipples for like a pretty like, let's not get too crazy operation yeah. that, that we've got. He was like, you guys are showing way more nipples than I ever thought you would show. And this wasn't even like combine nipples where they're like, all right, stri- strip down to your underwear. We're going to, we're going to uh, like weigh you like the t- famous Tom Brady picture where right. he's, he's like at the combine. He's not wearing clothes because that's what it is. And like, it's part of the evaluation process. Yeah. This is just Mac Jones. Like after a game with his shirt off, yeah. got to show this pic. This was, this is also like post, what is it called? Uh, like pump. Like, after you've worked out, your body looks better than... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, I, I like to push back on that. A lot of times, I'll work out, I'll come back from spin class, pop the shirt off, and I'll be like, I look even worse than I looked before. <laughs> spin class did a great job and everything like that. But I feel like ex- doing a lot of exercise, maybe, like, th- th- this has to be scientifically wrong, uh, makes, like, your bad parts look extra bad for a little bit. And then you get out of the shower, and you're like, okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, 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 this is know. fine. Who knows? Um, but... The Mac Jones thing drove me crazy because everybody went from either don't draft Mac Jones to the Patriots got Mac Jones, so there's something about him that we don't know because if the Patriots like him, then it's great. Or, oh, like, this was the master plan. Mac Jones all along. 
they stayed put at 15 and let three teams in the five picks before them move up. Mm -hmm. They didn't love that player. They they didn't feel that they need to have him. And then reports came out after, like, were the Patriots trying to get into the top 10? Nope. The Patriots made calls in the weeks leading up to the draft to figure out, like, what does each pick cost? And when teams in the top 10 were on the clock, they called the Patriots, and the Patriots were like, who dis? <laughs> nah, nah, we're good. So, like, the, I feel like at the end of the day, it it is it had to be a situation where, like, they liked Jones and they liked Fields, and they were just like, whichever one we can get, like, but whichever one so, might fall to us, we'll take that guy. Even so, it was so possible... That neither one of them would. Even when, like when it got to ten and both were still on the board, it's like, okay, so the Bears can trade up, the footballs can trade up. Or the not the Colts, because they just got uh Sam Ellinger. That's right. Yeah. We were both going there, not Carson Wentz, whatever with him. Um but it, it, the Saints are like so many teams could have moved up. It gets less prohibitive once you get there. The Bears only really had to give up next year's one. That's if if it's a franchise quarterback, it is so worth it. Look what the Chiefs did. Look what the look what so many teams who have traded up for quarterbacks and then seen like okay, that's a great player. The the, the payoff is there. So I think the Patriots liked Jones enough. There was probably a lot of players, not a lot, but maybe some that they liked more than Mac Jones, but they're but quarterback is just such a bigger need that they're like okay. But if, you think if like one of those number one wide receivers was there, they would have taken the wide receiver over Mac Jones because I do. Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, if Jalen, I, I would rather straight up draft Jalen Waddle than Mac Jones. Yeah, Jalen Waddle is definitely going to be awesome, mm-hmm. and you don't have any receivers. Mac Jones, Mac Jones is probably going to be fine. The Patriots have a, the Patriots don't have receivers, but I feel like they have a offense that'll make it really easy to play quarterback it's very funny that, personnel. very funny that mac jones has worse wide receivers on the patriots than he does at, at alabama oh a like thousand by percent. far <laughs> yeah. Patriots best receiver is nelson Aguilar, who <laughs> in a career year with a good quarterback last year was like a fringe number two receiver so they're gonna be i don't know they, they and, and i i i guess i'm just so frustrated with where the conversation with the Patriots has gotten. It's kind of Taylor Swift-esque, where if it's, you don't say yeah. it's absolutely perfect, or if you say, like, hey, this is life, things happen sometimes, that you're, like, a, a hater. If It's just, it's insane that, like, that no matter who the Patriots pick or how, like, a draft works out or whatever, that was, it. that, that was, that the, was plan. the plan. It's like... Well, we've seen them fail so many times, like especially in the draft. Yeah, where it's like, me. how do you how do you just automatically assume that that was the plan all along? And even if it was the plan all along, how do you not even think that like maybe it's okay to question whether it was the right plan? I think I have no way of proving this, but I think that Belichick liked drafting uh, Christian Barmore, Barmore so much more than he liked drafting Mac Jones. A, he traded up for him, but I bet. When Barmore fell to the second round, which I don't understand at all, I think that was a really good get by the Patriots. When he fell to the second round, I bet Belichick was like, hell yeah, I can end up getting a first-round prospect out of this draft. And then everybody was like, oh, you mean two first-round prospects? And he was like, what do you... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. right. Oh, yeah, we did use De- our first-round pick this year. Definitely. Oh, for sure. Yes, he's great. Ah, oh, yeah. You, Abby- did we call him to tell him we drafted him? <laughs> That, uh, that the video, was... the video is tough. Like, he's like, "You guys good with this? Well, you guys good with people this?" People keep saying that Bill Belichick doesn't listen to anybody. He doesn't collaborate. He just drafts his buddies, uh, players. I think that this was like, L- listen, "All right, like, look, I'm collaborating, yeah. and also <laughs> this was not my fault." <laughs> right? Yeah. I want it on the record that I was. This was not my decision alone. Did you hear Zayvon Collins's call? No. They played it on uh, Boston Sports Show. Um, Zolak and Bertrand. It was so funny. The owner, or not the owner, maybe the general manager, calls Zayvon Collins, and uh, he's like, "Hey, man, like, we're you, you excited? You're excited to come here and everything?" And he's like, "Coach, like, you have no." idea like because uh the gm's like hey no red shirt years man hope you're ready to go and he's like 
we are going to fucking kill everybody <laughs> like me in not like a problematic sounding way yeah. like a like a competitive kind of way like oh my god like we're gonna fucking kill them like but <laughs> if you like write that down like the first words this guy's saying upon coming to the nfl is like murder right and he said it a bunch of times and like i i not like trying to get the kid in trouble or anything but like every he's like okay i'm gonna pass you to to the owner i'm gonna pass you to the so they were playing it on uh Zoak and bertrand they were like okay we're gonna pass you to the owner don't say the <laughs> don't re rephrase what you've been saying but like he's Zayvon Collins, I think, is going to be awesome. So I wonder if Bill Belichick heard, heard that stuff and was like, damn, Zayvon Collins is going to be so good. Who do we draft again? Mac Jones? Ah, Fun. Yeah. <laughs> so that was uh, Tidy Spires, a.k.a. Uh, scone, scone Boys. Scone stuff. Uh, and then we already did a little thinking, too. We got to get some thinking, too, art made up. Also got to point out that uh, you did a draft stream mm -hmm. the washed fellas i couldn't make it because i uh I, I had the the work i, I did went. two wash streams i did like a pre-draft uh wash mock we did our own sort of mock yeah. drafts and then i twitch streamed throughout the nfl draft and you could just see my heart like slowly break as i realized the patriots were gonna get mac jones i didn't see your twitch i did see you sent me some clips from it that were very funny it just seemed like a good vibe the i watched the wash stream and those are so fun. I've told them like, hey, anytime you guys are doing the happy hour things, like we're in. We're we're, we're in. We don't want to. I said this to Dave when he he tapped in to uh, the brunch stream the other day. I was like, we want to do as much stuff as we can with you guys without Imposing. potentially upsetting your listeners, where they're <laughs> like, we like Will and Dave and Dylan, and those are the best parts. We don't want to hear the second best parts. So, but. I was like, any streaming with you guys is a, a blast. Like, th there are a type of people. So, I watched the stream. It was so funny. You guys were cracking me up. I loved it. I went home after the draft and just watched that. And it was so good. But, I don't know if, if you guys have been on Twitter. If you follow some of the washed Bruntouchables, you know about Napkin Gate. Which was, you did mock drafts of a bunch of subjects. Great topics you came up with. Again, you had me you had me rolling with some of your answers. Brett said, Hey, give me some submissions. I'll tell you I'll give your picks on the wash stream. And I gave answers to the subjects he asked for. Mm -hmm. He relayed mine. The ones that I actually said got laughs from you guys. It seemed like it was all I couldn't be there, but I still felt like I was there. I was like, you know what? This was a win-win. Good on you, Brett. Good thinking. This is funny. It felt. It kind of still felt like brunch was there between your answers and my answers. We definitely provided the like, well, what the fuck was that answer? But that's funny kind of options. So mm -hmm. I felt great about brunch's representation on the stream. And then out of fucking nowhere, Brett goes rogue and starts saying, I submitted things that I didn't submit, <laughs> including, what was it? It was uh, Best uh, fast food condiment. Yeah. And he said, DJ said napkin. <laughs> and like, to it had to make you feel good that like nobody laughed oh, at it that. Be great that yeah. It made me feel great that nobody laughed at the horrible thing that I didn't <laughs> submit and people thought that I said that and all agreed. DJ's but, not funny. But I think that like, it, it shows that you are irreplicable. Hmm. Like, like, Brett tried to, to do some goofy shit that would be like, DJ might say this. And even I was like, that just sounds like DJ's trying to be goofy for the sake of being that's goofy. A, yeah, yeah, you were like, yeah, you were like, that's. Brett was probably like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and even D like Dylan, we, we say anything, we're getting laughs out of Dylan. Right. We just know that. We're, we're a because he just code. doesn't get it. We're a Dylan <laughs> cheat code. Uh, I think that he's probably like, ah, oh, for some reason, these guys think this is funny. And that that seems very funny. I'm to happy me. for them. Like, I don't get why they love it. But, but I'm happy they're having a good time. Right. Um. So, my real answers got laughs. Napkin got universal. Like, well, that wasn't very funny. Oh, brother. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, already got, Brett has faced hell for it. I believe. Has he released a, has he released a, I feel like that uh, should be warranting a, uh, a release from washed underscore HR. 
with like a, a statement from the desk of Brett Merriman. Yeah, like a a horrible lapse in judgment, <laughs> things like that. But talked to talked to Dave about it. Haven't talked to Brett directly. I think we've I think jokingly have texted about it, texted a little about it. But I believe Brett feels bad about what he did. You go back and watch that though. My respect for Brett actually even went up through that because he he was so locked into this lie of me <laughs> having said that that he said he's like DJ says napkins and you were all like well that's a stupid terrible answer DJ awful and he wasn't he didn't laugh like yeah what's he thinking or whatever he was just like straight face he was like yeah I didn't get that one either <laughs> like the best Are we acting talking like seen, we like uh, is Brett like a sociopath? That's, I think I texted you. I was like, sociopath shit. <laughs> I definitely wasn't fired up about this at all. But uh, I forget uh, who's – is it is it Papa Teej? Yeah. Papa Teej was yeah. really on was really on this. A lot of a, – a lot. I, some Bruntouchables slash washed crossovers were really into like, hey – DJ didn't say that. I've played uh, I played uh, video games with Papa Deej once or twice. And really? That man sucks at Valorant. Really? He stinks. All I know about Papa Deej. He got Deej... like bullied off my stream because he was so bad. Really? Yeah. I've <laughs> Good been... sport about it though. I've been considering. Shout out Gordita Crunch. I've been considering tossing Papa Deej a follow. Ooh. I mean, he. Uh, you never know. Like. Who should I follow back and everything? And if I follow this person back, do I owe it to other people to follow them back? Really, I should just follow everybody because the problem cares? there is that you can't get out once you get in. Right, and then it's I mean I've you're locked had... in the house with that person. You're like, oh shit, this person's a this person's a sociopath. It's yeah. Brett Merriman. I'm living in the house with Brett Merriman. I'm a big Lake Street Dive fan. Back in the day, they followed me and quickly unfollowed Uh-oh. me. <laughs> but I I mean I I love them and everything. But I was like. That hurts. I wonder if they wrestled with like, oh, are we like letting him down now if we unfollow? And I really, I was like, yeah, they keep their numbers low, and why would they follow me? There's, right. th- there's not a beneficial thing there. But Papa Teach, there might be some benefit there because he's a deadhead, Ooh. and I like having access to deadheads. So maybe we'll see. Um, so is that that? I suppose the wa- yeah the wash stream was dope so uh, great job with that. What Thank else you. do we have? Uh, there's a new show. We haven't talked about this show that we've been watching. The new show that we've been watching, but we promise we'll bring that up soon. Oh, right. Well, yeah. we've been meaning to hit on a show that we've been watching called uh, called Guidance. We'll get to that. There's a new show called Mainstream coming out. Have you seen the trailer for this? Mm-mm. It stars Andrew Garfield. And he, I think, plays somebody who becomes a famous Instagram or social media star. But he's, like, the biggest douchebag. A lot of uh, Chet Hayes kind of vibes oh, hell yeah. going on. And hell it's like, yeah. I saw in the trailer, it was, like, some review said, like, they've done it. They've made the most obnoxious character ever. And it looks like a wild show. So, oh, so it's, that, a, it's a movie. It's a movie? Yeah. Oh, good. I'd rather that. It's a movie with uh, Maya Hawk is also in it. That's right. Maya Hawk and Andrew Garfield. Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to it. makes more sense for it to be a movie. What's Andrew Garfield doing TV shows for? Come on. Put some respect on his name. Uh, join the Patreon. We'll uh, what's the, listen to brunch slash uh, is it circling back or washed? Yeah, you've got it. Yeah. Listen to brunch slash listen to brunch. Join the Patreon. We'll have an episode on Friday that will probably include... The You Make My Dreams I'm very cover for and it. probably a longer You Make My Dreams discussion. And Friday, I think I might, I don't know, I feel weird about it, but that hang on Friday was a lot of fun. So I might try to make that a regular thing. Probably I'll be around this time. On so. Twitch, uh, people said it makes more sense to do 
on Twitch. If you're doing extended thing, I've to, I've told you this a million times. If you're yeah. doing extended things, do it on Twitch. Yeah. Because nobody hangs around Instagram lives for for all that long. I feel like because it's harder it's to be phones, on the phone. You do other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, people also said they said to do it on Twitch because it's easier to watch stuff on Twitch. Uh, Twitch at work. To like hide that you're That's screwing fair. around if it's on Twitch. So I'll do that on Twitch. Uh, you got topics. You got suggestions. You want play this. You want draw that. Do whatever. I just love that the last one, people were saying like play stuff, make an ass out of yourself. Uh, I had a lot of fun with that. So if you want to do that, that'll happen on Twitch. But hit that Patreon. We're so close to Affleck week. We got to talk about this stuff. And... Uh, should we, what do you think, third ad read? That's right. Brunch, hit it, boys! Brunch.